joy and peace that Jesus is talking about here transcends wars in Europe. The peace and joy Jesus is talking about here transcends wars in the Middle East. The peace and joy Jesus is talking about here transcends mass shootings and cultural upheaval. Peace and joy that Jesus is talking about here transcends even the deepest struggles of your heart and life. Jesus wants you to see this because He wants you to have this joy and peace. Now we talked about the joy last week. Today, I want you to see that there's also a peace that is available to you. And peace is a hard thing to find, isn't it? Part of the reason why it's so hard to have peace in your heart, to be at rest in your life, is because this world is filled with all kinds of imposters. It's very easy to fall into the trap of pursuing a fake peace in your heart. For instance, some think that peace will come as a life, uh, come through a life of comfort and ease. If you just had enough money to make your life totally comfortable. Or, you know what, if I could get to the end of the week, and if I could just put my feet up for a couple of hours and watch a movie or read a book or do what I want to do, if I just had that ease, a little bit of ease in my life, then I'd, I'd be fine. But this passage makes it clear that peace can't be found in this world, not true lasting peace. I mean, in chapter 14, I, I, I read it to you before, Jesus' peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. This is not a, a worldly peace. You can't get this peace from ease and comfort in this world. Some think of peace as a life of approval filled with the approval of other people and, and the accolades of success. You know, my heart would just be at rest if I accomplished all my goals and everybody sees that I accomplished all my goals. By the way, isn't that an interesting thing our heart does? Our heart craves not only to accomplish every goal that we set out for life, but also to have everybody see us accomplish the goals that we've set out to. And sometimes we think, boy, I could just be at rest if everybody could see me the way I want to be seen. And yet we see here that true peace will never eliminate every enemy in your life. Jesus says in verse, uh, verses 1 through 4 of this, you will face opposition. You can be at peace with God and have the peace that Christ is talking about here and still have people who think you're a dirty dog. It's not making everybody happy in your life that will bring peace. Some think of peace as a life that's totally tranquil with no trouble. I'm never going to do anything. I'm never going to go anywhere. I'm never going to take any risks because that could just... Rob me of peace. If I just kind of sit here in, in my little uh, relational and personal bubble as insulated as possible and get that garage door shut as soon as possible, then nobody can rob me of peace. But the reality is that isolation and tranquility don't lead to peace in your heart. True peace is meant to endure trials, not avoid them. What is this peace that Jesus is talking about? Well, from a biblical perspective, true peace promises us, us something more than the world could ever promise us. This idea of peace, it goes all the way back to the Old Testament idea uh, of, of shalom, of, uh, of, of peace, of, of being at rest. The Hebrew word peace, shalom, and has the idea that all is well. And everything, in other words, everything is exactly as it should be. That's what peace is. It's a, it's a settledness. It's, it's more than just the absence of conflict in your life. Peace is an ordered harmony when everything is as it should be. It's a state of well -be well-being that comes through salvation and submission to God. True peace is knowing that you're right with God, and true peace comes from the settled conviction that God does all things well. 